Okay, so let us begin with the lenses. We have two types of lenses. The one, and the, perhaps the most important for, in your case, is the converging lens. Converging lens, which is also called the convex lens. And the converging lens is any lens which is thicker in the middle than at the edges. So you see here, there, there's some examples of converging lenses, this uh, forerun. And uh, you see some of them, in some of them, the curvature left and right um, is not symmetric. Uh, uh, but as long as the, um, the center of the lens is more thick than the, the ends, then this le lens is converging. And um, converging, why do we call it converging? Because if, um, if there is a, a beam of light falling on the lens, like uh, here we represent this beam of light with parallel uh, rays, all of these uh, rays we see they uh, refract when they pass through the, the lens and they all pass through the same point which we call the focal point. So you see, the, um, all these rays converge on the other side of the lens and they converge through the same point, which we call the focal point. And that's why this type of lens is called converging lens. So all these lenses, despite the fact that some of them are not symmetric at all and they look funny, they behave in the same way. At least this is what we are going to consider here. So the characteristic of the converging lens is that it converges a parallel beam of light. Uh, because it's uh, hard to draw a lens, uh, we are not all artists, you know, um, there is um, a symbol that we can use when we draw a converging lens, and, and this is the symbol here, this uh, symbol here, which, um, which is a line with uh, two arrows up and down, to the top and the bottom. This represents the, con the converging lens. So this symbol is the symbol of the converging lens. Now, the, in order for, why do we use lenses? Because we want to make things look bigger or smaller, isn't it, to help us. Uh, therefore, in order for us to understand how we draw the, these objects and why objects, uh, through the, uh, when we see them through a lens, um, give us images which can be bigger or smaller or real or virtu virtual. We, we need to understand how to draw these pictures and we draw this, um, these images using ray diagrams as we did with um, mirrors. And to do that, we need to, to, talk, uh, to define some characteristic points of a, a lens, of a converging lens. So the first item that we need to um, consider is an axis which goes through the middle, here's the center of the lens, and this axis we call it the principal axis. So it's an axis that we draw, an imaginary axis that we call the principal axis. Now on the principal axis, there are two very, very important points, which are the focal points. And uh, the focal points, we give them the symbol F. So these are points, eh? one point here, another point on the other side of the lens. The, an important aspect to know about the focal points is that the, the distance from the center of the lens, the center of the lens is here uh, on, top, on top of the principal axis. These two distances are exactly equal. Even if the curvature, the two curvature left and right of the lens is not the same, the two distances from the center of the lens um, are equal. So the focal length, the focal lengths, um, each, each, each converging lens has two focal points and those two lens from the center of the lens are called the focal lens and they're exactly equal. Okay, so, this, uh, so the principal axis and the two focal points are the most important aspects when we draw ray diagrams. Sometimes in some books, you're, you're going to see that they give another um, point, apart from the focal points, they, they give another point which is a 2F, at a distance of two focal lengths. But um, I must tell you that this is not to, it's the significance of double the, this focal length points are not really too great. You can ignore them completely. Uh, some claim that the, that the 2F 
here it shows again this 2f this distance from the this point up to the uh, lens uh, uh, corresponds to the the radius of the curvature of um, the lens but this is strictly speaking it's not true most of the cases it is not the, it, it this is not the radius of the curvature of the lens and um, nevertheless, just to know, to have an idea that some, sometimes you might meet it in books, but uh, don't worry much about these two F points. The important point is the focal, the focal points, these, these two points. And remember, what is the significance of the focal point is that when a parallel beam of light falls on the lens, it converges at the focal point. So, if it, if like in this case, a beam of light falls from left to right, it converges at this focal point, the right one. If a beam of light uh, falls on the lens from right to left, then this beam of light uh, will converge, and sorry, and it will pass from the focal point, which is um, on the left hand side. Now, for us to draw ray diagrams involving a converging lens, there are three beams, three characteristic beams that will help us draw diagrams. From the, these three beams, which are shown here and we're going to discuss, there's no need to draw all these three beams, or rays rather, because we draw rays. We just need two, to draw two out of this, these three rays, any two, and it, Two are enough to help us find the position and the size of the image of an object. So let us see what are these three rays that we can draw. The first ray here is, a, well, there are some names here, the parallel ray, but there is no need to remember those, uh, the names of those rays as long as you know what you're doing. So what does it mean? That if a, if a ray falls on the lens parallel to the principal axis, this ray obviously uh, will, on the other side, when it passes to the other side of the lens, will go through the focal point, which is of course um, understandable. Understandable, since we said the parallel beam of uh, light falling on the on a, on a lens will converge through the focal point, isn't it? So here we just draw one of those, one ray of light parallel to the principal axis. It will con um, refract through the lens and will pass through the focal point. Obviously, if uh, there is another ray below the principal axis, if it's parallel, will also converge, I mean, will also pass through the focal point, any parallel ray. Another ray that we can draw is, um, is it's actually the opposite case of the first one that we saw just now. If there is a ray, a light ray that passes from the focal length the focal point, sorry, from the focal point of the lens uh, and falls on the lens, obviously after the lens it will continue parallel to the principal axis. So these two cases are somehow the opposite of one another. And the third ray, ray that we can uh, draw is, which is a very easy case, any ray that passes from the center of the lens, look at the center of the lens, any ray that passes from the center uh, emerges on the other side of the lens uh, without changing direction. So any ray, but any ray passing from the center of the lens will emerge on the other side without changing direction. So this is an easy ray to draw, in other words. So these are three rays that we can use in our ray diagrams two out of these three rays will be enough. Now, now um, we can um, use this information to, to draw and find out the images of objects when we look at them through a lens. So here are some examples. In fact, um, okay, here, these are, these are the examples that I have included in the lesson 66, the new lesson now that we have revamped this, this site. And you can see um, 
we have some cases where the object is like uh, far away from the focal length. Look, here's the focal point. Eh? Here, the object is far away, far away from the focal point, and we see the image formed on the other side. Here is um, when a case where the object is between the this point that is, corresponds to double the focal length, 2f, between 2f and f. And then there is a case where the object is placed uh, closer to the lens, to the lens between focal point and the lens. But I think it's better if we draw this from scratch. So let us um, practice this because it's um, better to understand if we draw these things from scratch rather than uh, seeing a ready-made diagram. So say that this is the principal axis and here we have the, the lens, a converging lens. Yeah. Here is the center of the lens. Say that this is the F, one focal point, and on the other side at the same distance, another, the second focal point. All right, so let us assume now that we have an object which is very far away. So again, like in the case of the mirrors, the object we draw it like with a narrow. And uh, the, we draw two rays starting from this object, two rays, to, in order for us to find the image. And these two rays, we, uh, um, we start two rays that, um, how can I say, pass from the top of the object. Let's use a different color, more color, orange, ugly color, eh? okay, blue. All right, so let's see. Uh, let us draw first a parallel ray, a parallel to the principal axis, and then a ray that goes through the center of the, of the lens, which does not um, change direction. And of course, now I will try to do that without the ruler and with my shaky hand here. Okay, let's draw the one that the ray that passes from the center of the oops of the lens. Oh goodness. Okay, so it, it will emerge on the other side of the lens and deflect it. All right. Now another ray, let us draw a parallel ray to the principal axis. So there is a ray which is parallel to the principal axis and this ray being parallel will be deflected and will pass from the focal point on the other side of the lens. Oh, okay. So there is the other ray. So you see now where those two rays meet, this meeting point is where the top of our image will be. And we see that now this image here is upside down, inverted, here is the image. And according to this uh, shaky drawing of mine, this image, this is the image, is ups inverted and it's smaller than uh, the object, that would be the object, okay. So you see, we just need two rays, not three. We could draw the third one, we any, any other ray that we could draw, if we do it right, it should pass from the same point. And remember, the, the rays that we draw is supposed to um, at least start, start from the top of the object, okay? So where they meet at the other end, it's again the top of the object, uh, the top of the image now. So there we have it. Now, let, now that we have drawn this shaky diagram, let's see the proper diagram that has been drawn. This straight lines, you see that, you see the, the one ray passes from the center of the lens, the other is parallel and is deflected passing from the focal point. So we need to remember these details, how to draw those rays. And where the two rays meet here is the top of the image and the image is upside down and smaller in size. Um, now look at this image. This image here is a real image. Why? How do we know? First of all, those those rays, well, the uh, these uh, two rays of light correspond to real light. Eh? The light has gone through the lens and has um, been deflected, changed direction, but it's real light. This, the, the, so this image is formed by real light. And therefore, this image is real. And what do we mean by real image? It means that if we put here a piece of paper, we're going to see the image. We're going to see this image of this object, but it will be upside down and smaller. 
And in fact, I don't know if you have, um, if you have a converging lens at home, sometimes these magnifying glasses, magnifying lenses. If you stand in front of the window and you put the, the lens in front of the window, you're going to see uh, whatever is outside the window, trees, I don't know, a landscape, another building, I don't know, whatever is out on the other uh, side of the window, you're going to see you a very nice clear image but inverted and very small like this picture here and if you put a piece of paper there you're going to see this image on the piece of paper so it's an easy experiment that you can do um, uh, to see that this image is actually real we can capture it somewhere we can capture it on a on a form or on a piece of paper now let's see another case where we're going to have the object closer to the lens like close to the focal point, like here between 2F and F. Now let's try and draw it again from scratch. Let's use again some other color. Again, now we have um, the principal axis and the lens. And uh, now say if this is, if these are the two focal points here, Let's uh, put the object closer now to the focal point. There is our object. Again, two rays. Um, let's draw them pink. I don't know, hope it, let's see how does it look like. It's very faint. Eh? Anyway, so um, they will have one ray again from the top of the object. Eh? Parallel to the principal axis will be. Uh, passing from the focal point on the other side. There is this ray. All right. Now another ray that again from the top of the object passing from the center of the lens. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, something like that. <laughs> Excuse the mess. All right. So here are the two rays. Where do they meet? They meet somewhere there, far away. And here, again, this will be the top of the image. And we see that this image is again upside down. Upside down, here's the arrow, upside down. But but now this image now is bigger than um, the object. So you see, as we come closer, I mean, when we place our object between two F and F, the image, the image formed is again real, but and upside down, but now it starts getting bigger, bigger than the object. So, but, and again, it's a real image. Eh? You see these rays here are real, real light. It's formed out of real light. What happens if we place our object exactly at this 2F, which is double this um, focal length? What would we expect? Do we have any ideas? Maybe you can think of it, of this. What would be the, the size and the orientation of the image? If, if you have any ideas, you can send me a message. I can see the messages. And in the meantime, let us see the proper drawing with the straight lines here. <laughs> here we are. We see that... Um, Uh, when we place the object in between two F and F, we see that the image has become bigger, the, bigger than the object now, but it's again real image and inverted. Could you repeat the question? Yeah. Uh, the question was, what happens if we place our object exactly at two F? What do you think is going to happen? How do you think our image will look like? This is, this is what the question is. Until you think of the question now, let us see another case where we, we're going to place the object between the focal point and the lens. In other words, very close to the lens. Which is, uh-oh, all right. With my big drawings, let me find the space here, there. All right, so now let me draw the principal axis and the lens supposed to be vertical anyway. 
So place my focal points again. And now the, the, <clears throat> the object will be placed close to the lens in between the, the focal point and the <coughs> lens, sorry. Once again, we need the two lines. Okay. One line parallel, one ray rather, parallel to the principal axis, which will be refracted through the focal point on the other side. And another ray from the, that passes, that passes from, from the, through the center. Whoa. <laughs> I think I need a lot of space here. Let's see. Let's see the straight lines here. Wow. I don't know if I have enough space. All right. So we see one ray that, the, that passes from the center, um, continues on the other side and the parallel ray uh, converges, is deflected and passes from the focal point and here it is. But now if you notice carefully those two rays, you see they're not going to meet on that side. I see your answer here, it's correct, yes. Okay, let us discuss now this. We see those two rays that after they pass to the other side of the lens. You, we see this, so, so two rays are not going to meet on that side. However, uh, if we extend these rays on the other side, on the, uh, on the first uh, side of the lens where the object is, we see that their extensions now, their extensions meet here. And, which means if our eye is here, our eye is here and looks at, receives those two rays, our eye is going to think that these two rays meet behind the lens, on the other side of the lens, actually on the side where the object is. And our eye will receive this information and send it to the brain and our brain thinks that the, ob the, the image is this one because you know our, op, uh, our brain interprets the information received by the two rays that pass through our eye as uh, our brain thinks that those rays has, have traveled straight lines, does not know the history of the refraction of the light. So our brain thinks that this is the, 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 ob sorry, the image, not the object, this is the image. So this image now seems to be upright Look at the, compare the size of the image and the object. This is the object. So the image is upright because it's in the same direction as the object. And uh, it's much bigger. So our, we are going to see the image a lot bigger than the object. And, but this image is not a real image. If we put a piece of paper here uh, in this location, we are not going to see anything on the piece of paper because it's, it's a virtual image, because it is formed by light which is not there. This, these two rays are imaginary rays. You see, they're, they're extensions of the real rays. Our, our brain thinks that uh, light has come from there, but the light has not come from there. These are not real rays. These are uh, imaginary rays, and therefore this image is a virtual image. So, in this case, in other words, when the, we place the object, this is the case. When we place the object very close to the lens, between focal point and the lens, the image that we are going to see is a virtual image and it's very big. And this is actually uh, what we do when we place our magnifying glass on a piece of paper with very small, print and we see the letters magnified. So that is the reason why we see the letters magnified because, um, uh, because look at the image, it's huge. Our brain thinks that the, the rays come from up behind the, the lens. And, um, and of course, if we 
place a piece of paper where we see this uh, text, we aren't going to see anything. The text here, the actual text is actually here our object, okay? And uh, we think that the text is so much bigger than it's behind the text. All right. Now, um, we had this question about we, what is happening if we place the object exactly at 2F. And we have the answer there. Um, we got the answer which is correct. <laughs> That it says that the, the image that we are going to see will be a real image, but the same size as the object. This is correct. And maybe we can try and draw it. Let me find some space. Let us see this example where will we place the If this is F and this is 2F, and this is another F, the focal point, and another 2F. If we place the, sorry, if we place the object here, we are going to find an image, we predict that we are going to find an image which will have exactly the same size as this one, and it's going to be upside down, and perhaps, um, did you say, uh, inverted and same size, yeah. And perhaps we expect it to find it here, isn't it? Let's see, where, where are we going? To? Hello. Oh. I have to fight with the pants. All right, now let's see. Um, let's draw a parallel ray that will be, that will pass from the focal point on the other side. And then let's draw another ray that will pass from the center of the lens. Oh, what a terrible drawing, sorry. It's terrible to draw this without the ruler. Anyway. Uh, something like that. And you, you see already, uh, with despite the shaky diagram, it suggests that this, uh, the image, the image is actually located at the 2F, which is on the other side. And, and we can see that it has hmm, the same size. I mean, if my drawing was perfect, it would be the same size as this one. Eh? So we can try it with uh, proper rulers and uh, proper lines and uh, make sure that these distances are equal then you should find the, the image that is upside down, inverted in other words, and uh, real and the same size, and located at the 2F um, point. Anyway, that would be an interesting sign. All right. Now here, all right. This table, this table, oh my God, 11.59, summarizes what we found um, with the object. When the object was beyond, that is far away from the lens, beyond the 2F, we found that it was inverted and smaller and real. And it was behind the lens, on the other side of the lens, in other words. When they, we placed the object between 2F and F, in other words, somewhere here, the the image was again real and bigger and inverted and on the other side of the lens but when the image is between the focal point and the lens we see that the, the image that we find is very different than the other cases it is on the same side of the lens as the object and it is upright and it's the only case where the image is upright and it's virtual and we can here we have this uh, weird case where the object is between focal point and lens. It's the only time when uh, we, we find the image which is upright and bigger and, um, and virtual. It's the only case where the image is virtual. This is a virtual image, the only time. The only time that the image from the converging lens is virtual. It's when uh, the object is very close to the lens between focal point and lens, it's virtual. 
And also note that um, the only time where the images are virtual is when they are upright. If we find an image which is upside down, then it's real. If it's upright, it's virtual. So it's another, another thing to note in the cases of the converging lens. All right, so that's enough for today because it's 12 o'clock, oh dear. So I hope it makes sense. I, I hope you understand how to draw a diagram now, eh? a diagram from the converging lens map. Next week we can see examples of uh, the other type of lens, which is not in your book, but I have seen in other books. So better play it safe and learn what to do with the, the other type of lenses, eh? the diverging lenses. All right, sweeties. So let us um, stop here before the, we are stopped abruptly on the system. And, um, and I hope you have a very great weekend.